Hi, I'm Dr. Hong. On behalf of Dr. Chen Quanfeng and our team, I would like to thank the organizer for providing us this chance to share our recent work and to interact with all the readers from the Journal of Hepatology. As we are all familiar with, the formation of hepatocellular carcinoma is a very complex process. Cirrhosis, chronic viral infection, and repeated toxin exposure arouse many different tyrosine kinase-mediated oncogenic syncline, such as Jack State and Raf Maytorg. In parallel, our team and other groups found that SHIP1, the tyrosine phosphatase that regulate these critical pathways, is also dysfunctioning in tumor cells, just like the cars would crash together when they all release their brakes. Tumor forms when cell lost this important negative regulator. Therefore, by activating SHIP1 in tumor cells, we could stop this vicious cycle and promote cancer cell death. This current work about nitatinib was exactly the proof of this concept. Nitatinib was originally designed as the triple angiokinase inhibitor, which targets VEGFR, FGFR, and PDGFR at the same time. In this work, our team demonstrated that nitatinib could directly bind to the SH2 and PTP domain of SHIP1, activate SHIP1, and induce inhibition of the state 3 singling, which promote the apoptosis of hepatoma cells. Importantly, this property on SHIP1 was actually independent of its kinase inhibition. In order to prove that, we generated a novel kinase-independent derivative of nitatinib, which we call it delta-n. The delta-n retained the backbone of nitatinib, but has no effect on any of these tyrosine kinases. Similar as nitatinib, delta-n could reduce substantial hepatoma cell death through ship one dependence day 3 inhibition. Since 2008, the success of sorafenib arousing in resistible fashion in developing anti-angiogenetic therapy for the treatment of hepatoma. Many different compounds such as sunitinib and brivatinib have been tried, but none of them succeeded. Interestingly, in this study and our previous work, we found that both nitatinib and sorafenib have an important kinase-independent property that is to bind the auto inhibited phosphatase SHIP1 in tumor cells, activate SHIP1, and inhibit state 3 singling. State 3 is a key player involving inflammation and associated carcinogenesis in hepatoma cells. Therefore, by treating cells with nitatinib and sorafenib, inflammation and angiogenesis could be inhibited at the same time, which may translate into better clinical efficacy. Currently, there are two ongoing phase 2 trials that compare nitatinib and sorafenib as the first-line treatment for patients with advanced HCC. According to the data presented in ESMO last year, the effects on nitatinib were similar as sorafenib in the Asian trial, but nitatinib was better tolerated. 53.1% of patients received sorafenib had experienced grade 3 or more adverse event while it was only 42.9% in the nitatinib arm. Certainly, we need to wait for larger studies with longer follow-up to prove the clinical efficacy of nitatinib. For other cancer types, nitatinib has been tried in non-small cell lung cancer, ovarian cancer, renal cell carcinoma, and colon cancer. Combination of nitatinib and docetaxel as a second-line treatment for non-small cell lung cancer has been shown to improve patients' progression-free survival, and the founders have filed for EMA approval. On the other hand, nitatinib was shown to delay the progression of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a fatal disease involving abnormal fibroblast activation and chronic inflammation. To conclude my talk, this study demonstrated a kinase-independent anti-tumor property of nitatinib. We wish our finding would help future drug development and to improve outcomes of patients with hepatoma. Once again, I would like to thank you for joining me on the webcast of the Journal of Hepatology. Thank you and goodbye.